Hey everyone, today we're talking talking sticks, but not sticks that actually talk. Something different. Welcome, my name is Jody Gonzalez. I'm an art therapist and service provider for a program of the United Way of Door County called Creative Stride. Our mission is to empower Door County students and their families through creativity and wellness education. Two videos ago, we talked about the theme of uncertainty, and in that video, we touched base on the idea of active listening. Because of active listening within that video topic and the number of family discussions that are involved in the videos moving forward, I thought it would be really helpful to touch on a communication skills building tool called the talking stick. So today we're going to be introducing the talking stick, what it is, how to make one, and what the benefits are for your family. So in a nutshell, here's how the talking stick works. Basically, go for a walk and find a stick. Then you decorate the stick. And then you have a family discussion and you pass the stick around. And if you're the individual holding the stick, it's your time to talk. And if you're not holding the stick, it's your time to listen. Now, I know that sounds incredibly simple, and it is, but that's also what allows some really powerful results. Here are some of the benefits of the talking stick. First, it provides every family member with equal opportunity to speak and also to have the attention placed on them and to be heard. Second, this can be really empowering for those individuals in your family who are quiet or withdrawn. Um, maybe it's someone who's just shy and quiet. Maybe it's someone who's just going through a period where they're hanging out in their room, not really talking to anyone. Or maybe they're just going through a difficult time with friends or with something else. This will help draw them out of their shell and at least participate in family activities. Now on the other hand, you might have a family member who's very active. He or she might be incredibly responsible, doing chores, taking care of younger family members, getting homework done, and they tend to not get attention because that is focused on other family members who have either emotional or behavioral things going on that need more attention. Don't underestimate the power of this. Sometimes it's the strongest ones who need to be heard the most, and the talking stick definitely gives them that moment. Of course, we also have the interrupter, the person who's always talking over everyone or interrupting or grabbing at things and in general needs to learn some social boundaries. The talking stick will definitely help regulate some of those behaviors. Do you have a newly blended family? Perhaps you are a foster family or maybe you have step brothers and sisters. Maybe your mom and their dad just moved in and now you find yourself suddenly sharing your bedroom. The talking stick is definitely going to help integrate family members and respect each person is equally important. The talking stick is also really helpful if you wish that you could have more substantive or more important conversations with your family members. For parents, that usually looks like asking their child what they did today or how they're feeling, and they go, eh, I just hung out, whatever, or eh, I'm fine. On the other hand, if you're a young person and you want to have a conversation with your parents, you might get something like, I'm too tired, let's talk about this later, I'm too busy. The talking stick is going to be a really important signal to everyone that this is time to put attention on each other and to be fully present as you talk and listen. So how to make a talking stick? First of all, you need just the right stick. This is sort of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Remember, she had porridge that was too hot, and then it was too cold, and then she found porridge that was just right? Well, if your talking stick is too light, it's just gonna be easy to play with. So the person talking is going to be distracting themselves, maybe like throwing it around, and you wanna be able to focus a little bit. So try not to have a stick that's too small. On the other hand, you don't want to log. Like, that's not reasonable. You can't be so heavy that certain family members can't lift it. You need a good medium-sized stick. 
Now a medium sized stick should be able to be held in both hands and it should have a little bit of weight to it, like maybe the size of a piece of fruit. Um, that's actually beneficial because it has a calming or grounding effect. If you're having a conversation about something that's emotional or otherwise heavy, this like literally helps soothe the nervous system for the person talking. The other thing is that this stick does not have rot on it. It's pretty solid, so you want to look for a stick that's not going to be easily broken. What to do if you don't have access to a stick or you can't find the right stick? This is not a problem. You can use any object. Just remember that the stick is about holding space in a group discussion. It is completely fine to use something like taped together spoons. You could use, we are in Northeast Wisconsin, the ever popular talking antler. You could use a coat hanger. You could use a cardboard roll. In fact, here's a picture of a piece that I did with a group last year in Arizona. That was just a gift paper roll. So the important thing, like I said, is that it's a medium size and it has some weight to it. Once you've identified the object that you're going to use for the talking stick, the next step is to decorate. And most popular options for that are to paint the stick. You can use house paint, spray paint. Got some here, please use an adult if you're going to be using spray paint. Um, art paints work well also, but they can be more expensive, so maybe you can find something else around the house that will work just as well. Then you can wrap the stick in twine or yarn. You can even use old necklaces, beads, jewelry parts, just to help bedazzle it a little bit. The most important element of decorating the talking stick is that every person in the family add a piece. There needs to literally be a representation of each person there. So it's kind of cheesy to say, each person should have a stake in the stick. Again, this sounds kind of silly, but when it comes to sharing, every person having that um, personal aspect is actually quite important and helpful later on. How to use the talking stick. We touched on this earlier. So you now have your talking stick that's been decorated by every family member and it's time to have a family discussion. Basically, when you're holding the stick, it's your time to talk. When you're not holding the stick, it's your time to listen. And when you pass the stick, everyone says thank you. Now this is so helpful if you have individuals who don't like to have attention focused on them, it teaches them to have a little bit more confidence using their voice. And as we also discussed, if we have someone who's always talking over everyone, this teaches them very clearly when it's time to be listening. And then the passing of the stick and saying thank you is just a way of acknowledging each person's perspective and voice objectively and without judgment. Finally, the talking stick is also really helpful for listeners who might often jump in and turn the conversation onto themselves or who want to fix things. The talking stick helps teach the self-discipline of keeping the attention on the other and not on yourself. I wanted to share an example of how powerful the talking stick can be, particularly for people who are maybe going through a dark time or who seem otherwise resistant to participating in a group discussion. Um, in this case, I'll just call this person M, and he was a 10-year-old in a group that I had about 10 years ago. 
Now, M had been through protective custody. He had been in a foster home, and he, at the point when he joined the group, had been adopted, which is really positive. But he'd been through a lot, and he was having difficulty making friends, and he had extremely high anxiety in different social situations. So when he joined our group, he was terrified to sit in the group circle at the beginning of group and at the end. And he was also definitely afraid of talking when the, with the group when we did the talking stick. Now, understanding where he was coming from, I said, Em, I can understand that it's really scary to be part of sitting within the group circle, but you are part of the group. So you can sit anywhere that you want in the room, but I do ask that you participate in the passing of the talking stick. You can choose to pass, you don't have to talk, but you have to at least touch the stick and pass it um, as we do this activity. So he agreed to that and, initial, and initially he sat way like at the edge of the group and he was so anxious that he couldn't even face the group. He sat sort of like this and he just passed the stick. And then over the course of several weeks, he gradually got closer to the group and he got to the point where he could hold the stick without talking, but he could hold the stick and say the word pass. And then eventually he sat within the group again without talking. And then finally he talked. It wasn't long before M made friends with group members and he was sharing in every group and eventually he started making more friends at school as well. A few months later, M decided to paint a portrait of the talking stick and here it is. It was not actually a golden stick, but that's how he chose to paint it. And he was so proud of this piece that he put it in the group art show and I promptly bought it. Now in his artist statement, you'll notice it has this black background. I had asked him, why did you paint the golden stick on a black background? And he said, because it is the one thing more than anything else that helped him emerge from his darkness. Or of the story, if you have a resistant family member who doesn't want to participate or speak, encourage them to be in the room and encourage them to at least pass the stick. Honoring that they don't want to talk, but giving them the power of choice of whether they talk or pass is sometimes the most powerful and encouraging thing that you can do. So here's a summary again of how to use the talking stick. Have your topic, pass the stick. If you're holding the stick, you talk. If you're not holding the stick, you listen. When you pass the stick, you say thank you. And the person holding the stick always has the option of speaking or saying the word pass. So now that you've decorated your completely awesome family talking stick and you have it at the center of the room or at the center of the kitchen table, you may be looking at it going, and what are we supposed to talk about? Now some families may not have any issue coming up with any number of topics to talk about, but here are some helpful suggestions if you need them. First, you could go back to the last video, which was about gratitude, and just come up with one to three things on a gratitude list and pass the stick, and each person shares what they're grateful for this day. Another topic could be the best of the day, the worst of the day, and today I noticed. So that would be three things that each family member shares. Another topic could be today's most prominent feeling. Finally, you could just ask your family, is there something, a topic you guys want to talk about, or is there something that someone needs to talk about today? After you've used the talking stick a few times, it's going to emerge as a really important tool and cue that this is a time to talk and to listen. Decide, as a family, where you should put the talking stick. Maybe it lives on a shelf or a fireplace mantle, maybe it sits at the center of the coffee table, or maybe it's in some other prominent place where people can see it and where people can take it down if they need to use it. So this is one of the quiet ways that the talking stick can be really helpful. Sometimes it's hard to start a conversation 
um, or you have something to talk about that's difficult to bring up, simply moving the stick, placing it out in a prominent place, or holding it out to a family member is all you need to do to say, hey, I need some time for you to listen. Whether you choose to decorate a stick, a spoon, or an antler, the talking stick activity is a really important signal to your family that it's time to do some healthy communication. Used regularly, you might be surprised by the results. And remember, it's not about a painted stick. The stick represents that you've developed the structure and the consistency for family members to develop their talking and listening skills. And it represents that you're creating a safe, non-judgmental space for family members to express themselves.